Salamat pagi everyone. It's 6.45 in the morning here uh, in Bali and I'm awake so early because I want to conclude my trip with a bit of uh, t uh, tips and tricks, things that you need to know and places to visit and of course the conclusion to my experience because that's really why this YouTube channel exists. As you can see the sun is not even completely up yet. It's, it's such a beautiful scene in the morning that I like to wake up and just come to the Shala, my favorite place in the retreat. Is that a chicken? First things first, I think this is a magical place. I really do think so. There's a, there's a spiritual feel about it. Scenery here, the people, the, the, the places to visit, the natural uh, environment really makes you want to connect with it even more. And there's something about it that just makes you feel at home and makes you want to come back. Um, oh, God, ants, ants. Get away, get away, get away. Ew, ew, ew. I absolutely had an amazing time here and I think there's no debate about that. First things first, I'd like to advise is that if you have a fear of dogs, uh, just like I had, still have a little, I was attacked by a big black dog with like sharp teeth when I was a kid. I don't exactly know the breed, but it was huge and massive in comparison to the kid that I was. So I sort of developed this, this fear of them. Every time I see them, I sort of try to kind of run away. As soon as you arrive to Bali, you realize that you realize that there are many, many stray dogs um, and they have a pretty nasty bark. But trust me, uh, someone um, I met here at the retreat, her name is Wendy. You've probably seen her. You've probably seen her in the earlier videos. She told me to just let it go and ignore them. And that's exactly what I did. And I think every single time that I stiffen up and, uh, you know, flinch and I try to kind of run away, they sense my fear and they come closer. So my suggestion would be is that if you're really afraid of dogs or if you don't like them, completely ignore them. Second thing is that you'll see a lot of scooters, a lot of bikers around, um, a lot of cycling. If you're interested to try that, I suggest you do it in the daylight. Um, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not chaotic, it's just people here drive differently and the roads are set up differently and they sort of communicate with horns. Um, uh, amazingly enough, we, I have not seen an accident happen yet and according to the people who live here accidents are rare traffic accidents because people are just chilled and they're slow when they're driving so if anything occurs out of the ordinary they simply stop so there's a lot of time for them to kind of react if you're going on a bicycle trip on your own or if you're just going to roam around with a scooter or something uh, I suggest you uh, ride on the left lane always because that is your way so I don't know how to explain it but if you're going this way towards the camera then you should take the left lane because that's how all cars are going um, and simply if you're too slow don't worry about it they'll just overtake you they won't wait um, or they're just toot the horn and you just kind of have to step to the side uh, it gets it takes a lot of getting used to I guess and um, you just need to be very careful because sometimes it does get a little scary with all the cars being fast and all but definitely drive in the morning it's much easier you'll see you'll be able to see more easily hello how are you good no don't worry where were we oh so i got kicked out of the shallow because someone had a personal treat pt uh personal pt personal personal training <laughs> another thing you need to take into consideration is money exchange so I totally just got ripped off yesterday um, and I knew I got ripped off but I still went ahead with it anyway because I you know, didn't have time and I needed the money but um, they will try to trick you. Uh, like yesterday I wanted to convert I think $300 into about 4 million rupees and um, he was just giving me very small change so I'd make a mistake and he also missed out on giving me like a million rupees uh, so the rest of my money and you need to check the exchange rate I think this will save you a lot of heartache to be honest so just be careful um, I'm not saying all of them will be like that some of them are ethical and you know very nice and will give you the right amount but just be careful and always count your money Fourth thing I need to talk about is hotels or villas. I think you definitely need to stay at a hotel or a villa that you definitely trust. Um, I think security is very important here. I heard of you know people using open air bathrooms and then having people just randomly jump in the bathroom. Uh, you just need to be very careful as to where you stay. I think that's a very important decision you need to make when you're coming to Bali. I'm gonna move on to what 
or where you need to visit. I haven't been to much. Bali is actually quite huge. Some areas you can go to can take up to two hours of driving. Um, but we did go around, uh, we had a very tight program, so we did go around the close areas. Um, Chenggu is definitely a beach area that you need to go. The beach is beautiful and there's the world famous Echo Beach with like really um, strong waves if you're into surfing. And that's definitely a place you need to go. And the second place you need to go to is Semniac. So if you're into shopping, I think Semniac and um, Puda are are good for you. Seminiac I felt like it's more towards the high end. Not high end, I mean luxury brands, but I think they have really nice boutiques there. If you're interested in that kind of shopping, then definitely go to Seminiac. But if you're interested into the traditional Indonesian markets, then definitely go to Kuda. That's where there's plenty of them. One tip, don't take the price that they're giving you um, as you know the last price. Um, they tend to give you incredibly high prices and then change as soon as you try to leave. So always try to bargain. I think you'll get good deals if you bargain with them. And they're very open to it. <laughs> they'll whine about it, but they'll give you the price. Things to do in Bali, definitely a cooking class, 100% recommend it it is an amazing experience just be careful there's a lot of spices and chili and indonesian food um so yeah just as you chop it do not and i mean do not put it anywhere near your face because especially your eye the chili is quite spicy and i literally felt my cheeks burning throughout the whole day no joke one other thing you need to do is an eco cycling tour that was an amazing experience it was very adventurous exhilarating really and just gets you to see the real part in Bali the real Bali I think so you're in the city and there are a lot of tourists and then you go to the countryside and you actually see how the Indonesians are living which is very interesting and of course we got to see like an active volcano in front of a lake and just really a lot of different things and I think you really need to experience that especially cycling through nature I think it was really beautiful there are definitely a lot more places that you can visit in Bali. It's so huge. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been to all of them, so I could only recommend the places that I've been to. And now, let me show you the souvenirs that I got from Seminyak, from Kuda, sorry. Okie dokes, let me show you. There's so many things to buy. I think, I think I was really confused as to what to get, but as soon as you're in there, you're like, oh, I can buy this, I can buy this, I can buy this. Take a look at this. This is actually actually a coconut bag. So this is a coconut shell and they just, I think hardened it or roasted it or something and they made it out of, they made it into a bag. That was really nice. They had different variations of it. I just got the smallest one because I couldn't carry anymore. And of course, inside I stuffed a lot of accessories. You'll find a lot of handmade bracelets. This is like a shell that has Bali and a shark engraved to it. I don't know if you can see it. And then I got rings loads of bracelets so it's a ring rings made of glass like earrings bracelets just really nice things that you could gift someone and they're handmade so it's very i think it's very precious you know this is it really nice things you can buy and keep for souvenirs i think the most important thing that i got loads of is the sarong which is the traditional wrap that um, Indonesian uh, people just you know wear around the waist uh, it's quite beautiful there are two qualities of that there's like the cheap quality which I don't like and there's the batik so if you go to Bali anytime soon just look for the batik um, material which is a lot thicker and more high quality and obviously more expensive but you can haggle I think another place that you definitely need to uh, visit is um, the Kopi Luwak uh, coffee plantation. It was a really nice experience. You get to, you know, see how the Kopi Luwak coffee is made, um, how it's roasted, and then of course try it if you're comfortable with trying it. I'm usually not comfortable, but I couldn't resist a cappuccino. Last thing I want to talk about is, of course, my experience. I think this was very eye-opening. I was really stressed. I was really technically scared. I think the first day I was like a little girl, you know, just looking around. I couldn't sleep. Um, so as I said again security and safety is really important here or anywhere actually anywhere you travel um, but I think it was really great I met some amazing women here we had such a great time and you learn a lot about each other and you learn how to kind of open up um, I guess I can't say that I I found myself here uh, I think this place just made me a little more confused <laughs> but it's a good amount of confusion because 
it's a, it's a it's really like 10 steps forward for me and I now know that I want to explore more so definitely a place you need to visit eye-opening so much fun a lot you can learn about yourself if you're traveling alone this will be a great learning experience if you've traveled before this will be an amazing and fun experience to you know go through a lot of places to visit and the Balinese people are just lovely so this is pretty much it for me this is Neda and I'm reporting to you from Bali. Thank you so much for following me on this trip. I hope you liked the videos and please, if you have any comments or feedback or suggestions, then please drop them in the comments section on YouTube. And if you like the video so much, so either hit like or share or even subscribe. Bali, this is definitely not goodbye. This is a see you later. So back to Dubai.